to transcend the human and heavenly way, we must realize all contaminated things are suffering. By Ven Renz. Many people enjoy practicing virtue, which is certainly important as it is the foundation of the path to liberation. However, many people are addicted to practicing virtue and cannot transcend it. Even after countless eons, they still can't enter the path to liberation. So it's really hard. Especially, some people have been practicing the path of virtue for many lifetimes, getting used to it. So when they encounter the path of virtue, they feel joyous. They have formed a habitual tendency and attachment to it. Thus, it's hard for them to generate renunciation and let go of the path of virtue. Therefore, we should study all contaminated things are suffering. We need to carefully meditate on the suffering of change as well as the pervasive suffering. If you haven't seen through the suffering of change and the pervasive suffering, you can never transcend the path of virtue. Because you lack the wisdom of all contaminated things are suffering, you cannot transcend the path of virtue and you consider it good, how wonderful the path of virtue is. You regard the wealth and prosperity of the desire realm, whether in heaven or on earth, as superior and fortunate, thinking, why not enjoy worldly blessings life after life? However, this is just your daydream, because you cannot stay there forever. Even though you may have followed the path of virtue for many lifetimes, once there are no Buddhist or other religious teachings, you will decline after your accumulated merits run out. Being on the path of virtue, you certainly have merits. However, as you are enjoying the blessings, you are also consuming your merits. Thus, you will inevitably decline. Hence, where there is happiness, there must be suffering. Where there is suffering, there must be happiness. Suffering and happiness are always intertwined and inseparable. Therefore, when learning all contaminated things are suffering, we should carefully experience where the suffering of change comes from. How does happiness arrive? Then we will discover happiness arises on the basis of suffering. Without suffering, there is no happiness. Therefore, our happiness is fake. Happiness arises on the basis of suffering, so it is definitely not true happiness. True happiness is free from suffering, while this kind of happiness arises only after suffering. Thus, it is fake. Since suffering is a prerequisite for happiness, how can this happiness be considered true happiness? It's established on the basis of suffering. It's like no matter what you add to cow dung, underneath it is still cow dung. Even if you place flowers on it, sprinkle pepper, beef or sesame powder, when you grab some and eat it, the taste of cow dung is still there. When you smell the flowers on it, though there's the fragrance of flowers, the smell of cow dung is still there. On the foundation of cow dung, whatever you do, it's still cow dung. It's the meaning of the metaphor. All your happiness is built on the basis of suffering. Thus, it is fake happiness, not true happiness, not true peace. When the practice of the path to liberation reaches the state of the Buddha, true eternity, bliss, self and purity, such peace and bliss is free from suffering. 
This bliss is not worldly happiness. That's why it's called bliss. It's not the suffering of change in the world. Instead, it is the inner freedom and peace that transcend the three realms. It is neither happiness nor suffering. It is completely free from suffering. Thus, it is called bliss. Only when we engage in such practice are we leading a meaningful life. Otherwise, staying on the path of virtue would be too shallow. You keep clinging to it. No matter how many blessings you enjoy, you are still on the cow dung. 